Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vol, and today we're going to be doing some sculpting to turn this model into something a little bit more chaotic and evil. So I've started this off by checking this model as an SDL and importing it into Blender using the standard technique that I've shown in a previous video. The link is in the description should you want to have a look at that. And it's a really nice model, it's got a nice lot of detail to it. It looks a lot of fun to play around with and we're going to be adding to this to make it look a little bit different because we can and also this is something that's been requested by a few people over on my Instagram who've been asking how to turn some models into something that looks a little bit more evil so they can use it for different armies. Now this underwater or aquatic fighter comes from a Kickstarter that is the sponsor of this video. Now this is the Kickstarter for the Aquafell Auxilia. At the moment this is a page that is not yet released when I'm filming this, so this may change slightly. For example, there are some stretch goals at the bottom that are only talked about, but as this gets funded and those targets get reached, I'm sure you'll start seeing more and more on this. But already it has some really, really nice cool models on it, and more importantly, a really cool concept. So we can see some of these models here, and you can see these are all designed around some sort of regiment of assumedly humans that look like they fight underwater. Now I really like this, um, I think it was from a book in the Horus Heresy series if anyone's read that where there was a battle taking place that occurred in an underwater city and uh, that really got me liking the idea of this and that was quite a while ago and to see someone having realised that in model format is great so something really really nice you can see all the different models here and there's some different weapon options I do need to pull down to where is this guy you've got different tanks I really like these these uh, Ogryn sized models just really do something for me I don't know why I just think they're fantastic and you've got a lot of different options being thought through here but importantly these are all being made in these bits so you've got separate arms separate legs separate torsos so when you start getting through these stretch goals you've got a lot of different options of what you can make with these sets and obviously you could put them together yourself and then print them or you could print them individually and then make your individual part so do check out that kickstarter it's really really nice got a lot of really cool things on it a nice long list of stretch goals now importantly at the bottom of this there are two links for freebie models so the creator of this kickstarter has put a couple of these models out for you to look at yourself and the one that i'm using in this video is this flotilla commander so you can download that for free if you follow the link that is on the bottom of the kickstarter you also have this deep water mutant here which is the really big cool ogryn guy so uh, you've got a lot of options here to potentially play around with that or something like these to turn them into something a little bit more chaos and evil i think it's just something in my mind i think there was some artwork i've seen before of this sort of chaos polluted ocean that has been almost infected beyond repair and I think that would be really cool to visualise with this. The other thing that's going to be important is that this is going to use some sculpting which we haven't yet covered on the channel and if you haven't done any sculpting before do not be concerned about that we're going to cover everything from a very basic point of view to begin with but we're going to cover everything that you need to know so even if you've done no sculpting before that's not going to be a problem. So to begin with I'm going to focus on this shoulder pad and we're going to be bringing in some spikes essentially making it look like this armour or the armour of this character has started turning to the dark powers and is starting to mutate and change to better reflect that allegiance. Before we get into the sculpting we need to set this up and we want to make a spike. So I'm going to press shift and A, I'm going to bring in a mesh and we're going to bring in a cone as a good starting object. Let's move that up to the close to where we want it so we can scale it correctly. Now we're going to make this first one somewhere here along the trim. So let's rotate that along the Y axis. 90 degrees to begin with let's scale it up a bit so it's a little bit larger and we're going to deal with a couple of problems that would be a bit of an issue in sculpting so the first thing we need to deal with is this perfect point here and it's not very realistic in terms of what we're going to get and it wouldn't show up well on a model at this scale anyway so we're going to go into vertex mode Control shift and b just to bevel that vertex and i'm just going to use the middle wheel on my mouse to take that down a little bit so it's not quite as pointed so we're just going to go with something about there that should be fine and then into top view and let's get this roughly in position so we want something about there let's scale it on the x-axis and let's make it so it's not perfectly round so i'm actually going to scale it on the z-axis to make it a little bit flatter and put it in approximate position so that's going to be pretty much what we want at the moment we'll deal with everything else in sculpt mode now we can get into sculpt mode in several ways but I'm just going to come up to the top left hand corner and choose sculpt mode and you'll notice we had an error at the bottom there that said that this scale could cause some unpredictable results and that is because if I go back into object mode and bring out the side panel with N 
an item that the scale is different because we've been moving this around and we need to do our standard thing of control and A, apply the scale and we actually want to apply the rotation as well. So I'm gonna go down to rotation and scale to select both and that'll fix that and then back into sculpt mode. Now there's a lot of different options here in terms of brushes. I'm gonna bring that out to the side so we can see what they're all called if we haven't used these before. And we're gonna use a few of those in this video, not all of them at this point, but just a few to get started with. So it's a good introduction into sculpting. Now, the first thing we want to do is add some ridges to this so it looks a little bit more organic. And we're gonna do that using the draw brush, which is the one that's already selected. But if I come into this and start trying to draw on it, this is not gonna do anything. I'm actually pressing down and it's not actually making any changes. And that's because in a similar way to proportional editing, this works off all of the vertices that's on this object. And if I quickly go into edit mode, there aren't any vertices on that side area for it to deform or move. Now, there are several ways of dealing with this with sculpting. In fact, two major ways of dealing with it. The first one we're going to look at is going to be the most relevant for this. So back into sculpt mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to retopologize this shape, which essentially is going to add a lot more vertices to this object and allow us to sculpt onto it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to press shift and R and it will come up with this box here and we can move our mouse side to side and you'll see that there's a load of squares on this and that's giving us a guide of how big each face is gonna be created on this object. So I'm gonna go with somewhere like that to begin with, we'll just call it one. Now yours might be slightly different to this depending on the scale of the model and how much you've increased it in size. So that's why this shift and R is really useful to give us a visual representation of what we're doing. There is another option if you come to the top with remesh where you can pick this size, what's called the voxel size, but without having a reference, it's quite difficult to know where this should be. So I actually prefer the shift and R option. And then all we're gonna do is press control and R and that's going to remesh the object that we're currently on, which is our spike. And if I just go back into edit mode quickly, you can see this has created all of these faces at the same size as that voxel size. So back into sculpt mode, and now I can draw on this and it's gonna make an indent, or in this instance, it's gonna make a ridge. Now we don't want a ridge, I'm just gonna undo that with Control and Z. What we want to do is make an indent, and there's several ways of doing that. So the first thing we can do is if we come over to the tool on the right hand side, you can see that this has got a direction of whether it's adding or subtracting, and the draw brush typically adds. We can change this to subtract by clicking here, or we could do it in the top here where we've got a plus or a minus. I generally try not to fiddle around with that though, because we can also do this without actually changing anything permanently by holding down the control button as we draw, and that means that that will turn into an indent, as you can see here. So essentially control does the opposite of whatever the brush normally would do. So if it would normally create a raised surface, it will create an indentation. So let's put in some ridges to make this look a little bit more organic. I'm gonna put something in there, another one down here, another one here, I'll put one down here and here. So nice and easy and something we can get looking pretty good. Now. At the moment, this is looking a little bit jagged. We can smooth this out by using the smooth brush, which is here. And all that will do is if we go over it, it will smooth out some of those edges so they don't look quite as extreme. The other way of using the smooth tool, if I go back into the draw, is that if you ever hold down shift, whatever brush you've got activated at the moment, it doesn't matter, it automatically does the smooth function. So you can go between brushes really, really quickly by using control to give the opposite effect or by using shift to give you that smooth option. Now at the moment we've got this rivet still showing slightly, so I'm just gonna go and use the grab brush, which is here, and the grab brush will allow you to click on something and pull it out. So I'm gonna pull these little bits so that we don't have that showing. And you'll notice at the moment it's only grabbing a small area. We can change our size of our brush by pressing F, and then that, if we move left and right, will change the brush size. So for example, I can go something nice and big, move around, and just drag out that side there. Back into the draw, and once again, control to put in that ridge. But you'll notice now it's continued or kept that brush size really large. So I'm gonna undo that, F, make that brush size smaller, and control to create that ridge, and then shift to smooth that out. So we've got our interesting spine here. We've got a few more bits that we need to move around. At the moment, I'm not totally happy with its position. I think it needs to be slightly higher up. So let's move that around now. 
going to go into object mode and just simply grab it. G, move it up a little bit. We'll go with something like that. And let's S and X to make that a little bit more extreme and bring that to there. So that's looking fairly good as a start point. Let's get that over the top of that rivet. I'm going to scale that up slightly one more time. Okay, happy with that. Now we are going to want more of these spines at some point. So I'm actually going to press Shift and D to duplicate that. I'm just going to move it over to the side. Pretty much ignore that that's there for now, but we've got it for later. The other thing is I think this isn't going to print very well. It's quite long and pointed. So S and X. I think that will look a little bit better and probably less likely to cause us any problems. In fact, let's hide that so that it's not going to get in the way. And select the object and back into sculpt mode. Now the other thing is I don't want this being perfectly straight as a horn. It's a little bit boring. So let's go back into that grab brush. Let's F to make that nice and large. I'm just going to grab that tip and sort of move that up to be a little bit more interesting. That looks more fun. And finally, while this might not show up very well on this scale, if we're doing something larger, this could be quite important. We're actually going to add a little bit more detail here. So I'm going to go back into my draw brush. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to add some small scrapes. So we're going to need a smaller brush size, something like that. And at this point, if I try to do this, this isn't going to work very well. The voxel size is just too large. So I'm going to go back in by Shift R, make my voxel size nice and small. I'm going to go somewhere about 0.3. Control and R to retopologize. And at this point, if I zoom in slightly, I should be able to draw some nice scratches on this. Again, holding down control to get the opposite effect. And we'll get these little nicks in. We can also increase the strength. If I come over here, I can just drag across, put that all the way up something like one, and that's gonna make a much harsher line. In fact, I think we can go a little bit smaller with the brush again. Something like there. That's a bit better. We've got this nice sort of look as if something has scratched this horn at some point just to add a little bit more damage to it. And again, to make it look a little bit more like it's something that has grown and gone through a bit of wear and tear. And again, shift to smooth those out slightly on the edges so that it looks a little bit better. Nice and happy with that. So we've got that there and we've got our horn. That's all for this video, but in the second video we're going to have a look at how to make this more organic looking material on the armour that could either be mutation or some sort of world features. Finally, don't forget to check out that awesome Kickstarter where you can get this free model for you to play around and chaosify it yourself.